Hey there, my name is Lee, and I'm one of over 600 employee investors here at Greg Distributors. Now when the weather starts to get cold, the last thing you want to deal with is freezing, especially in your vehicle. That's why we're going to focus in on heavy duty automotive antifreeze for this episode of Gear Up With Greg's. Coolant, or antifreeze, is a chemical mixture that protects your engine from overheating in the summer and freezing in the winter. What's the difference between coolant and antifreeze? Nothing. So to make things easy, I'm just going to refer to this chemical mixture as coolant for the rest of the video. Now, generally this mixture is approximately 50% water and 50% coolant and additives, but that can change based on the climate you're using it in. Colder temperatures may call for a 70% coolant to 30% water ratio, while warmer weather can get away with 40% or 50% coolant in the mix. The base component of coolant is usually either ethylene glycol or propylene glycol. When mixed with water, glycol lowers the freezing point and raises the boiling point of the mixture, widening the effective temperature range of the water. Like we mentioned before, how well a coolant works at various temperatures depends on the amount of water versus the amount of glycol in the mix. However, there are some restrictions. With more than 70% glycol in the mix, the ability for the coolant to transfer heat is decreased. And with less than 30% glycol, there won't be enough inhibitors present to be effective. What are inhibitors? Well, they're additives in the coolant that help prevent rust, corrosion, and erosion of the cooling system components. Many modern coolants also contain scale inhibitors and anti-foam inhibitors to stop the growth of scale particles or prevent bubbles from forming. Bubbles or scales in your system lead to the erosion of the plastic and metal parts, especially in the water pump. Now, we mentioned before that the coolant in your vehicle is approximately 50% water. So why can't you just use water to cool your engine? Well, when automotive cars first hit the streets, that's exactly what they used. But it was quickly discovered that in extremely high or cold temperatures, the water boils over or freezes, causing damage to your vehicle. Some people prefer to use concentrate and water to achieve their desired mix. If you do this, make sure that you're using deionized or reverse osmosis water. Using normal water will add to corrosion in your cooling system. So how exactly does coolant keep your vehicle system safe? Well, coolant circulates through the passages of your engine block, picking up heat from the combustion chambers. Then the coolant will either cycle back through the engine to pick up more heat, or the thermostat will send it through the radiator to cool down before beginning the cycle again. Okay, so now that we know the basics of coolant, you're ready to grab one off the shelf and throw it in your system, right? Wrong! With all the different colors of coolant, you may think that using the same color would mean that you're using the same formula. Coolant coloring varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, so you're better off looking into the exact type of coolant you need to use. Some of the more common coolant types are IAT, OAT, and HOAT. IAT, or inorganic acid technology, is often referred to as conventional or traditional coolant, since it was the original coolant on the market. Developed mainly for light duty use in vehicles made prior to 1995, this type of coolant doesn't see a lot of action in modern cars and trucks. Generally speaking, an IAT coolant will last approximately two years or 300,000 kilometers. However, when used in heavy duty applications, additional service intervals are required for adding supplemental inhibitors or additives. OAT, or organic acid technology, is considered an extended life coolant, or ELC, which means they don't require regular additions of supplemental inhibitors. They generally last up to eight years or 1.6 million kilometers. However, in heavy-duty applications, coolant extenders are sometimes added to top up certain additives. 
While OAT coolants seem ideal in heavy duty applications, they need to be used alongside nitrate or molybdate to ensure there is an adequate cavitation protection in the system. HOAT or hybrid organic acid technology combines both IAT and OAT corrosion inhibitor technologies. HOAT coolants generally last up to six years or 960,000 kilometers. Developed to extend the service life of conventional coolants, they are suitable for top-up use with both IAT and OAT coolants, making them a versatile product to have on hand. HOAT coolants also have excellent cavitation protection and high temperature aluminum performance. Now, if you're ever unsure what coolant is in your system, flush it. Mixing coolants of different types can lead to all sorts of problems, like gelling and loss of inhibitor benefits. For ultimate protection, you want a coolant you can trust, and that's where the HD Expert line comes in. Now, the number of different colors and types may seem a bit intimidating, but don't worry. We're going to walk you through each choice so you can make an informed decision. First up is the classic, a purple colored conventional IAT. This coolant is generally used in the construction, agriculture, and trucking industries, and for vehicles made before the mid 90s. Classic is fully formulated, which means it can be used in a heavy duty application with no extra additives needed. However, it does require some maintenance as the nitrites will deplete over time, leaving your system unprotected. We'll talk later about how to monitor the performance of your coolant so you know when it is time to replace it. Premium, a red hybrid nitrate ELC is perfect for trucking, agriculture, marine, and equipment use. The extended service life of this coolant makes it popular for in-field usage and it lasts approximately six years or 960,000 kilometers. The premium coolant has excellent cavitation protection, excellent heat transfer capabilities, and protects all system metals from erosion, corrosion, and rust. Extra, a pale yellow ELC has a wide compatibility range and is suitable for all engine types. It's optimized for both nitrite and nitrate-free requirements, and is perfect for top-ups on coolants of any type. With ProShield OAT corrosion defense, it offers protection against corrosion and deterioration. The service life for Extra is about six years or 960,000 kilometers, making this coolant perfect for mixed fleets, whether that's heavy-duty diesel, light-duty trucks, agriculture, automotive, or equipment. Endurance is golden color, also featuring ProShield OAT corrosion defense. It provides excellent high temperature aluminum and liner cavitation protection. It has the best service life of all the HD Expert coolants, boasting a whopping eight years or 1.6 million kilometers. That's a 60% increase over the premium and extra coolants. This coolant is ideal for long haul trucks with an extended service life and no supplemental additives required. But hey, if you're looking for something not quite as heavy duty as the HD Expert lineup, don't think we've forgotten about you. The Turbo Power Extended Life Coolant is an OAT long life coolant, providing a service life for up to five years or 250,000 kilometers. This formula is perfect for most cars and trucks. If an OAT formula isn't going to work for you, give the Turbo Power Global Extended Life Coolant a go. This formula can be added as a top up to any coolant and is recommended for use in all makes and models of passenger vehicles and light duty trucks. And with a guarantee of up to five years or 250,000 kilometers, this coolant is sure to keep your system going. Now, if you still don't know what type of coolant might be best for your vehicle or equipment, always refer to your owner's manual. Not only will this handy booklet list the correct coolant specifications, it will also outline your maintenance schedule. 
Knowing when to flush or top up your coolant is just as important as knowing which one to use in the first place. Over time, the glycol in a coolant will degrade into acid, which can harm the components of your cooling system. Inhibitors extend this time frame, but won't stop it completely. That's why it's good to know how to check your coolant to ensure it is still working the way it should be. Start by doing a visual inspection. Let the engine cool down and pull off the radiator cap. There should be no debris clinging to the underside of the cap. And if there is, well, that's not a great first sign. Pull some of the fluid from the radiator using a hydrometer. If the coolant is milky or opaque, it's no good. Or if you see particulates, this may be a sign of rust or other damage. Now, the hydrometer isn't just for getting a good look at your coolant. It will also provide a reading so you know what temperatures the coolant is protecting against. Once you've filled the hydrometer to the fill line, give it a few taps to make sure that there aren't any bubbles clinging to the float. This will give you a more accurate reading. Then, just look at the indicated levels, which will let you know how much freeze and overheat protection your coolant is providing. If you want to know more about these handy hydrometers, be sure to check out our video on Easy Red Testers. With these basic tests, you'll know your temperature range and have a rough idea of the quality of your coolant. But to test the corrosion inhibitors, the multimeter test will determine if there's an electrical current running through your coolant. Voltage in your coolant means that the metals in your system will start to corrode. So, set the multimeter to 20 DC volts, put the negative lead into your coolant, then place the positive lead onto a ground. Do this test once with the vehicle off and again with it running. The reading should be 0.3 or less. If it's not, you may be at risk for corrosion. Now, to test for pH, you'll want to use coolant test strips like these. Following the instructions on the package, you should get a visual reading of your coolant's pH. This reading should be between 8.5 and 10. Seven or lower means that your coolant is acidic and will start eating away at your gaskets and rubber hoses. Yikes! So, if you've got bad coolant, you'll need to flush it out and replace it. But remember to follow your local regulations for disposing of old coolant, since this toxic stuff shouldn't just end up down the drain. But before you do all that, Come on by to your local Greg's and get stocked up on everything from pH test strips to full totes of coolant. And if you have any questions, be sure to send us a message on social media and one of our friendly experts would be more than happy to lend you a hand. Or you can visit our website at gregdistributors.ca. Again, I'm Lee and thanks for joining me on this super cool segment of Gear Up With Greg's. Have a great Canadian day.